Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Geography with Joy. My name is Subhalakshmi and in this channel we are going to deal with 10th class Geography ICAC. Before starting the class, I would like to request you all to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Please don't forget to like and share my video. You can put your comments and suggestions as well in the comment box. So let's get started. Today's class is on water resources. It's chapter number seven. The scope of the chapter is sources of water resources, surface water and groundwater, need for conservation and conservation practices, rainwater harvesting and its importance, irrigation importance and methods. For your kind information, I would like to intimate you all that the chapter is little lengthy. So we have divided the chapter into two parts. In part one, we will be learning about sources of water and the conventional methods of irrigation. In part two, we'll discuss about modern methods of irrigation and conservation of water and today's class is on part one our water resources we can proudly say that india is a land of rich natural resources and water is one of the most important among them as we know agriculture is the backbone of indian economy a large amount of water is used for agricultural activities. Apart from that, we need water for industrial purposes, production of hydroelectricity, navigation, household activities, and many more. And this demand for water is increasing rapidly with the increase in population, whereas the supply remains almost the same. Moreover, out of that, a large amount is going waste because of pollution and poor management of water. So we can see an imbalance between demand and supply. So what's our duty? We should be careful enough to use water efficiently and maintain a balance between demand and supply to get the maximum benefit of water which is available to us. Sources of water. India receives a plenty of water in the short rainy season, and that is the main source of fresh water in India. The main sources of water are basically divided into three categories. They are surface water, groundwater, and lagoons and backwater. Now, what is surface water? Surface water is that part of water which is available on the surface of the earth in the form of rivers, lakes, ponds, tanks, canals, etc. Out of that, a good part of it is lost through the process of evaporation and plant transpiration. A large part of water percolates in the ground and is available in the form of groundwater. Here is a beautiful picture of surface water. Isn't it beautiful children? Yes, indeed. I have some more beautiful pictures for you. Let's explore. Another source of water is underground water. Underground water or groundwater is that part of rainwater that seeps down through the cracks and crevices of the earth into the ground. This is a diagram of underground water. This water is also unevenly distributed or you can say not equally distributed everywhere. This is maybe because of the topography of the land, surface geological conditions or maybe the prevailing climatic conditions responsible for this uneven distribution of underground water. 
The third source of water is lagoons and backwater. Now what is a lagoon? A lagoon is a lake of salt water that is separated from the sea by sand or rock. Now this is a beautiful picture again for you children. This is a picture of lagoon or backwater. You can see so many lagoons in Kerala. As we know, India has a long coastline stretching over more than 6,000 kilometers. The coast is indented and hence a large number of lagoons have been formed. The water is generally brackish in nature. Brackish means saline or salty and is used for fishing and irrigation of paddy crops and coconut. Water requirement and its utilization. As I told you before that India is basically an agricultural country where two thirds of its total population depends on agriculture. And our agriculture is dependent on monsoon system which is very erratic, unpredictable, irregular and sporadic in nature. That is why some regions suffer severe drought whereas some other regions lost everything under devastating floods. To tackle this problem of droughts and flood, the government of India has adopted a policy of efficient management of water after independence. Under this policy, the emphasis was given on maximum utilization of existing water resources for various purposes like irrigation, flood control, drinking water, navigation through canals, etc. Hence, this project is known as multipurpose project. Some of the major multipurpose projects in India are Bhakranangal project on river sutlej, Damodar Valley Corporation on river Damodar, Hirakad Dam on river Mahanadi. This is a picture of Hirakud Dam. The water is gushing out from some of the Swiss gates which are lifted up to release the excess water. Apart from that, we have some more multipurpose projects in India like Tungavadra project on river Tungavadra, Chambal project on river Chambal, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam on river Krishna, etc. Importance of irrigation in India. I am repeatedly telling that India is an agricultural country where irrigation is regarded as one of the prerequisites for agricultural development because of uncertain rainfall, uneven distribution of rain, nature of soil, the need to maximize agricultural production and also to utilize river water more effectively and efficiently. Methods of irrigation. Depending on the topography, soil, rainfall, availability of groundwater, etc., irrigation methods are categorized into canal irrigation. Around 31% of the total irrigated area is coming under this method. The states are UP, Punjab, Haryana, West Bengal. The second category is tank irrigation. Around 6% of the total irrigated area is coming under tank irrigation. The states who are using it are AP, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Karnataka. And the third and the most popular one is well irrigation. 57% of the total irrigated area is coming under well irrigation. And the states are Gujarat, Punjab, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh. The above methods can be categorized as conventional methods of irrigation. Modern methods of irrigation include sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation. Canal irrigation. 
Now you may ask what is a canal? A canal is an artificial channel that is constructed to carry water to the fields to perform irrigation. Water is taken either from the river, tank or reservoirs and it is mostly from the rivers. The irrigation in which water is channelized from the rivers is called canal irrigation. Broadly speaking, canals in India are of two types, in Anderson canals and perennial canals. In Anderson canals are those canals that are used only when the river is flooded. That means when the area is inundated with flooded water, that excess water is channelized and used for irrigation. Hence, they are seasonal. On the other hand, perennial canals are those canals that draw water from the perennial source. They flow throughout the year. This is a vibrant picture of perennial source of canal irrigation. And this is beautiful, isn't it? Now, let's compare the advantages and disadvantages of in Anderson Canal and Perennial Canal. First go to the in Anderson Canal advantages. They are cheap and can be built easily. They are useful in controlling in floods. Now have a look at the disadvantages. Since it is a seasonal source of water, they are useful only during floods and only low-lying areas can be irrigated. Now let's move towards the perennial canal. Advantages. These canals are useful throughout the year. And cultivation of crops can be carried out round the year. Now have a look at the disadvantages as well. Since it is a perennial source of water, water logging may take place and may create swamps. Alkaline salts may get accumulated on the surface of the earth and can make the soil unproductive. Tank irrigation. Irrigation in which small buns are built across the river and are then diverted into the fields through narrow channels is called tank irrigation. Tank irrigation is useful in the areas which are dependent on rainfall for their water supply. Tanks are constructed in the areas of natural depression by building iron embankments or masonry walls to collect water. This water is used in dry season. The most important states who are undertaking the tank irrigation technique are AP, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, etc. And the most widely used regions are Deccan Plateau and Peninsular India. This is a tank where water is stored to use in dry season. Now have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of tank irrigation. First, advantages. It is significant and very useful in storing abundant rainwater. Tanks are useful in uneven rocky peninsula plateau where rainfall is seasonal and scanty. It is difficult to construct wells and canals in plateau regions due to underlying hard rocks. Hence, tanks are preferred. Now look at the disadvantages. Tanks are silted. Tanks may go dry when monsoon fails. There is loss of water due to evaporation during summer. The next method is well irrigation. Now what is a well? A well is a small hole dug in the surface of the earth to obtain water from the subsoil for irrigation and other purposes. The suitable conditions for digging wells are 
the water table should be high and the ground should have soft rocks and this is the most widely used method of irrigation the areas which are mostly using this method are uttar pradesh punjab and haryana there are two types of wells first one is the surface well or ordinary well and the second one is tube well where water is lifted up with the help of power driven pump this is an image of surface well surface well can be of two types unlined or lined unlined wells are also known as kachcha wells which are not lined by bricks or cement these are cheaper to dig and are essentially used for irrigation lined wells are also called pakka wells and are lined with cement or brick and are mostly covered and hence it is safe even for supplying drinking water this is a tube well a tube well is a bore well which is dug deep in the ground with the help of drilling machine the water is pumped out manually as well as with the help of electricity hence for the construction of tube wells sufficient ground water supply and cheap electric power are essential now let's compare the advantages and disadvantages of surface wells and tube wells first go to surface wells advantages wells can be dug at low cost it is cheap simple and a dependable source of irrigation look at the disadvantages now it is difficult to dig wells in hilly regions wells depend on rainwater and underground water which may vary from place to place and from time to time now let's go to tube wells advantages it can irrigate a large area water can be lifted up from great depths by using electric pumps look at the disadvantages now it is expensive as it requires continuous supply of electricity excessive use of tube wells can lead to groundwater depletion it becomes useless if the water is brackish that's all for today i hope you have understood and enjoyed my class in my next class we'll be talking about modern methods of irrigation and conservation practices if you have any doubt or query please write in the comment box i will definitely answer to it please do share my video with your friends thanks for watching see you in my next class bye bye and have a good day